back in business. So I think the first order of business is we're going to get back to the player home. We're going to ditch a whole bunch of stuff. And then we're going to head on to Fort Dawnguard. Uh, but we've got kind of a long way to go before we get there. So I'm just really curious. I don't know how that door opens or if this is part of some other quest. Because I ain't seeing no levers and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So. All right. Well, we're here. Also going to do one more check with the enchanting supplies. Okay. Now, we're we're in the middle of of a of a quest, a main quest situation right now. I think that's why Serana is not do you need something? Oh, she will take stuff now. She wasn't while we were in the Soul King. Yeah, sure. You want stuff? I got stuff. Check it out. Um, tell you what. How about this mace? That's neat. Um, this dagger of dawn. That's pretty neat. Oh, this sword. You're going to want that. That's a really nice sword. All right. Let's get some rest. So Raiden is going to be, he's going to be trying to do all the normal stuff. Look at that. See, yeah, there's enemies here. I can't fucking sleep here. Does anybody know how to get beyond that door? I mean, th this is a vanilla, this is a vanilla dungeon. This, this isn't, this isn't anything added by a mod. Anybody know? I don't know. I'm not seeing anything. Like, I'm wondering if, like, a trap is sprung if I take these items. But Raiden wouldn't do that. He wouldn't take those items. Um, so, I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. So, if anybody's got any ideas, I am open to them. Uh, I can hear the Charis back in there. So. Uh. Glowing mushrooms in the brazier? <laughs> well, okay. Ah! Well, dang! There we go. All right, F5. Oh shit, oh shit, there goes my wild healing. Who's there? Done and done. That's a risky maneuver. Stabbing someone in the side of the head like that? Palmer Lore Master. Well, let's take those. All right. There. 
Ready? All right. Sloppy, but I'll take it. I knew I heard something. Come on, Serana. Unleash the beast. Okay, well, if you're gonna just kind of squat there, I can't do nothing. Imperial Elves. We don't need it from the Imperial Elves. Right. <laughs> okay. What is this it? Ooh. Lister Wart, I'll take that. Who's there? I knew I heard something. Ho! Beat down. Oh, I flanked. This way. All right, and there's a whole lot of nasty down that hall, so let's save here. Who's there? I knew I heard something. How am I missing him, man? Bastard. Okay. Where'd you come from? Done and Thanks for that, Serana. Call me Ice Beak. Where 
Stay back. There. Fucking lightning. Lightning is the worst. Okay, come on. Fall back. Fall back. Fall back. All right. Let's heal vigorously. And let's... Let's see. I got a 20% resist. My uh, extra special ring does not really help me with shock. It only helps with the hot and cold stuff. So. Oh, no. It's getting staggered. God damn. Oh. Well. <clears throat> yeah, that was, uh... That was Wildcat at work, staggering me. Which is fine. That's how it's supposed to do. So, if we take a look at this, um, yeah. Wildcat is saying that I've got a leg injury, which is going to take another 2 minutes and 45 seconds to resolve itself. We've also got moderate fatigue, but we couldn't sleep because there were enemies around. So we kind of have to see this thing through. All right, back this way. All right, I'm, I'm going to take a couple of these char segs in, in honor of packet loss. Normally I wouldn't, but... Come on out of there. Come on. There you go. Let's see where this spits us out. Ah. Great. All right. We should be able to get some rest now. Yeah. Good deal. All cleaned out. I'm exhausted. Let's get some sleep. I should have a quick lie down, eh? Oh, God, I'm tired. Hey, could you rub my feet? No. Right. <clears throat> that is definitely what Twist would have asked. That's not Raiden's style, I don't think. All right, so let's see. 12.43 p.m. Yeah, if we go a good six hours, then hopefully it'll be dark by the time we get going again. All right, so two-handed is maxed out. Setting our investment in that doesn't make a lot of sense. Now block, of course, we can invest in that, so maybe smithing for now.
All right, so feeding on blood is not something that he's going to be doing. At least not yet, right? I mean, he's not desperate yet. But it's going to it's going to get that way. So that is another upcoming role play challenge that is going to have to be addressed at some point here. But I'm going to play this out until it gets pretty severe, I think. Let's move faster. The sun is it's not great for my skin if you Uh the sun is down. Ugh. All right. Let's move on. All right. We're going through here. All right, hang on, y'all. All right, did a quick roll for Dark Intent. He didn't sense anything, so we're going to breeze on by this place. Again, Dark Intent is two ten-sided dice. In his first encounter with the location, there's a 10% chance that he'll sense something. Every encounter with that location following that is an additional 10%. That's kind of how I'm doing that. If he senses Dark Intent, then he will sometimes go in. Messy all up in here. Done and done. Damn. Who's there? That'll teach you. All right. Feeling a bit fatigued. All right, let's just keep heading south, I guess, for now. Yeah, I'm not using any uh, vampire-related mods at this point. None at all. Come on, beast. Come on, beast. Let's do this. Who's there? Inspired by the long tradition of Nord brewing, Draugrlager brings to you the authentic wallop of days gone by. Draugrlager is crafted for real warriors and is not intended for gormless, honey-drinking arsemongers. Bring back the bold, musty flavors of the Merithic era with any of our line of ancient Nordic lagers. Made with only the finest and really super extremely old ingredients, Draugr Lager will satisfy even the dustiest of palates. Draugr Lager, the great taste of the undead, with no bitter afterlife. Better taste of undead, a little more than I. All 
All right, this is going to take us to Dragon Bridge. And maybe we'll travel by road from there. We'll have to see. We've just got such a long way to go. Um, but it gives us time to consider some things, uh, namely this issue of him being a vampire. I haven't decided what he's going to do about this. Right now, in his mind, he is thinking that becoming a vampire was a means to an end. He believes he did something that was necessary in order to advance this quest, which... Pretty much everyone involved believes is necessary to save the world. So in his mind, he's thinking it's not as if he had a choice. And if given a choice between becoming a vampire but maintaining his soul, which in essence is his consciousness or who he is as a person, and giving up a portion of that and, and allowing someone else to control that, um, to him the decision is a no-brainer. But of course, we know that there is going to be a very different reaction from the Dawn Guard when he gets back there. Now, he doesn't know that yet. My guess is that in his heart, he knows that it's not going to be good. He knows that he could walk in there and they could, they could try and kill him. But he's kind of got this, this undying faith in the idea that in the end people are going to do the right thing and the fact that Serana was able to walk in and Serana has been helpful in getting this stuff done that he'll be able to reason with Isran about this situation and he'll he'll be able to help him understand that this is what was necessary all right so that's what he's thinking now he's also he doesn't have any facts, but he's holding out hope that the vampire disease is something that he'll be able to cure. He has no idea how. He doesn't know how it works, but he's hoping that he'll be able to cure it. But at this point, he's got no guarantees, he's got no information, and he's kind of moving forward with this idea in the back of his head that he's hoping he can cure it, but he might not be able to. He, he just doesn't know. So there are going to be some some role-play things going on as as we're faced with this reaction from the Dawn Guard, and he's he's got to face that. He's got to face the music, I guess, where that's concerned. So there'll be some things to think about there. But then there's just also the the other issues that are swirling around this. I mean, eventually it's going to get to the point where he's going to have to feed. He's going to have to make a decision and decide what he's going to do. Um, and it's going to be kind of a difficult one for him but it's possible that it may be not quite as unpalatable as it might be for example someone who was a member of the Dawn Guard being turned into a vampire someone who joined the Dawn Guard because someone in their family had been killed by vampires and they had this this vendetta remember Raiden doesn't have a vendetta He doesn't have a vendetta. He doesn't have anybody in his family who's been killed by vampires, and he doesn't go around just indiscriminately killing undead. He kills them when he's attacked, but we've seen him let vampires go. We've seen him travel extensively with Serana, um, even again, even with the objections of his his Where'd comrades you? in the Dawn Guard. Ha! Harvest the blood. All right, we just need a wood elf. Hey, look out for a wood elf. 
Um, that was a good battle right there. Let's have five here. We won't lose any progress. All right. So let's have a quick look. I'm interested in just inspecting restoration. Let's just make a note here of where we are with restoration at this moment so we can track and just kind of confirm that Okado's recital is doing what it's supposed to if, if we can see this bump up um, when the power kicks off. We'll know that it's working. And our warrior's flame is still kicking off, so we know that there's enemies still about. Right here. Who's there? No escape. Yeah. take all of their shiny, including that shiny. Oh, she resurrected the guy that's normally dead in the middle of the road. Classic. I like it. All right, let's go. So a lot of things to think about. I And I haven't really... Um, one of the things that we have available to us in our player home that we've selected is the ability to make blood potions. Now, in order to do that, we need human flesh. We can do it with human flesh, or we can do it with hearts, stuff like that. Um, and he may end up having to do that just to stay alive. But I think the one thing that we can definitely guarantee is that Raiden is not going to feed off a living human. That's not something that he would do. Um... I think in the short term, I'm going to do a little something that I've done in the past where, as a side effect of this condition, we, we see him start to be disgusted yeah, by the totally idea... God. Oh, wait, is that a vampire? Cloaked hooded figure... This must be that beautiful Skyrim weather I've always heard about. He He's going to develop an aversion for cooked meat, and he's going to want only raw meat, that kind of thing. So I've got a bad feeling about this guy. Hang on. Hang on. Do our instincts tell us anything? He's dead. Look at him. I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Okay, we don't know if he means harm or not. He hasn't he hasn't messed with us. So let's just approach him. See what he does. Cause I mean right now he's kind of minding his own business, right? We know what you are. Alright, so we're gonna let it go. Got both. Drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry. All right. What we're looking for is any. Does he have anything uncooked? That would be nice, but he doesn't. However, Raiden's got quite a bit of food, and now being grossed out by the cooked stuff. He's going to sell any any meat that he has that's cooked. All right. See ya. See ya. I only take real coin here. 
No handouts and no bartering. How about rumors? They say Folly and Amorthal have studied vampires. What? Draugr and all matter of undead. Valian. Well, that answers that question, right? We got that hint right there. Now, there's multiple reasons why we might want to talk to Falion. I mean, it seems like a guy like him could be a good ally in the fight against the vampires, but he may also know something about what's ailing us. So, that seems reasonable. <clears throat> All right. Interesting. Bloodiest beef in the reach, love. Bloodiest. I have to say, it's the bloodiest beef in the reach, Buffy. Absolutely delicious. Delicious. Okay. I see beasts ahead. You there! Who's there? I knew I heard something. E, e, e. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Vigorous, vigorous. Uh, resist our shock. Oh. Still remember how to fight. Oh, my God. Vigorous, vigorous. Uh, well, stamina is fine. Oh, that was brutal. I wasted so many potions in that fight. Any of them Bosmer? No way I could ever get that lucky, right? No. However, let me have a look here. Switch to our hunting knife. Raiden is starving. So we're going to butcher this. He's going to basically eat some wolf meat at this point. All right. So what do we got here? Is that... Is that listed under what? Raw wolf meat. Okay, he's going to eat that. And going through his bag, he's enticed. He's enticed, strangely, by this troll's blood that he's collected. And he drinks both of those, not knowing what they're going to do to him. Ugh. Doesn't feel much better. Wait a second. Nord. You know what they say? You can't get blood from an ash pile. <laughs> is that is that how that saying goes? Seriously, I'm asking. Can't get blood from an ash pile? No. All right, let's keep moving. Let's keep an eye on those goons. Oh, I think that's a merchant. 
Hey. You have questions? Uh, yeah. Oh, what do you got? <laughs> Take a look. Uh, you got some stuff. Um, well, she's got herself some money to spend. Let's, uh... We've got things we can certainly sell to her, however... All right. That's pretty much it. Got rid of a few things. All right, then. <laughs> Thanks, Awada. <laughs> That's thanks, Awada. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> yeah, well. Ah, I did a Vander there. You see that? <laughs> okay. Let's, uh... Keep on keeping on here. How are we doing, anyways? It's Fosy Cumbridge Scouse. Not great. Um, so, yeah, we got to get to our Hacienda, which is down Rifton Way. Let's cut this corner here. I know it's a risk. But we shall take it. We shall take the risk. Uh, okay, so we jumped into that battle, remember? Something had to be kicking off during that, although that thing doesn't look like it's changed much. Although one dose of wild healing at this level may not do much. The better test would just be to cast a whole bunch of healing spells or whatever and just double check, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be going up. Now, <clears throat> maybe the thing to do here is we, we can stop and try to train a couple levels, sell off a bunch of a bunch of stuff in White Run. We could probably get a lot accomplished in White Run before we continue on. Hey, look at, look at, it's our headless horseman guy again. This is like fate. This is the second time we've seen him. And we're pretty sure no one else can see him but us. Oh, look at Sabercat's trying to track him down. Hey, did you see that thing? Sorry, I don't have time to ogle the grotesque. I gotta follow the headless horseman. See where he goes. Man, we're faster than his horse. Of course, he doesn't know we're chasing him yet. Once he finds out, he's gonna pour it on. Get away from that freak. Trailing him. But there's something significant about this, right? This is the second time we've spotted him. And we've spotted him in kind of the same place. And it seems like he's leading us yet a second time. And then he came up there. It's like he's trying to show us something, right? So 
these, these are the kind of things here. What we're experiencing right here is just a bit of serendipity that the game is throwing at us. But we have the opportunity to make it meaningful. We can make this meaningful. The fact that this this thing, this ghost... This ghost is leading him more than once, and no one else appears to be able to see it, and it has led him to the same graveyard both times. I think it's significant. Now, it's up to me as the player to figure out how it's significant and how I'm going to work it into the story. All right? Um, I had sort of forgotten about the previous encounter, but now this is a little bit of a shot in the arm. It's, it's another indicator that there's something significant here that i got to think about. So, we'll do that. But for the sake of the role play, I'm making the trip all the way... All the way to the graveyard. I actually want to see him go in there and, and disappear. Oh! That's the second time now. First time we were led here, it was with Goldir, and I was always taught to avoid these types of ruins. I think I see why now. We were with Goldir, and we spent some time here, actually praying, which was kind of interesting. So let's do it again, just like we did last time. 